In today's Health Watch, we look at how artificial intelligence could at last be on the verge of opening a whole new frontier in medicine. AI is now being used to interpret imaging and flag drug interactions for possible or possible treatments, in fact, and also help doctors with their paperwork. Doctors are very happy about that. CBS News <laughs> Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. John LaPook is here with what it means for doctors and uh, patients as well. Dr. LaPook, glad to have you back. You're excited about this. Super excited about it. How, how do you personally use artificial intelligence in your practice? All right, first of all, I'm a gastroenterologist, right? So I do colonoscopies. Well, there is an AI application that allows uh, an AI uh, app to look over my shoulder as I'm doing the colonoscopy, and it can spot a very subtle polyp even before I do. And huh. as a show and tell, I'm bringing uh, a tape from uh, about six years ago. I had a colonoscopy. Okay. Dr. Mark Pachapin and Dr. Seth Gross. Ooh. Uh, that's me in the white hair. And there is, see that little, that square? Yeah. It finds a very subtle polyp that maybe you, you would have missed, you know? Oh, wow. And identifies it, puts a square around it. He's uh, Dr. Chapin's. No, because there, there's no, I'm out, first of all, and there's no real sens sensory uh, nerves there that can make me say, ouch. It comes out, it goes to the pathologist, and uh, this, has been tr this has been shown to be more sensitive at picking up Polyps, and not instead of the colonoscopist, right? It's just looking over my shoulder saying, how about this? Sometimes it, it beeps and it's really just a bubble mm -hmm. of water. And sometimes it's, boy, I didn't see that. Mm -hmm. wow. First of all, hats off to Dr. LaPook for coming and, and showing us his true self. Yes, well, <laughs> yes. Uh, from, the, from, the the, from, the, from the inside. No, I think it's important that we yeah. demystify this. And you know, this is a no embarrassment zone. Uh, there's also use of AI for things like mammography, re helping to read mammography, and again, there's a radiologist there, but the AI app is looking over the shoulder and saying, hey, what about this? So this is better for patient care, but yes. can there be negative effects? Like there's always like the concern for false positives, right? Yeah, and that's why, you know, we have to be in the middle of it. As doctors, we can't say AI is something's gonna happen to us. It's something that we're gonna be very involved with. As an example of that, I spoke last night to Dr. Paul Testa. He's intimately involved with helping to make technology more helpful and more, more prevalent in the hospital using computational uh, devices and, and, and AI. So he told me some of the things that are happening that are so, they really lit me up, okay? One of them is, when you go into a hospital, there's tons of information that's words that are just in the chart, right? Um, how do you analyze all that? So I saw somebody yesterday who had, a year ago, had a very big procedure, and then it took me about 20 minutes to go through it. Mm -hmm. Well, what they're experimenting with is taking all that language, so large language analysis, natural language analysis, and summarizing it. And so that I could come look at the summary. If I want to like, look at the actual note, I could have a link to it and say, okay, that's what happened. Then on top of that, it can do analysis of what's going on in the hospital. So for example, somebody writes a note saying, I think this person should be started on blood thinner. And it gets lost in the sauce, nobody does it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, there can be an agent, a computational agent, that's saying, hey, wait a second, somebody ordered this and it wasn't done. And then a little friendly reminder to maybe do that. Yeah. Um, you think there could be some areas where AI replaces human beings entirely? It's not just an assistant, but a... The primary? Yeah, I don't see that happening. And I think the way it's gonna not happen is if we take an active role, that, like we're doing at NYU Langone Health, where I'm a professor of medicine, I should say in full disclosure, and other medical centers are doing that, which is, no, you know, uh, the, the interaction, the human interaction yes. with a, a, a real person um, yeah. is, I think it's irreplaceable. The bedside it, manner. The bedside yeah. manual, the, you know what the computer can't do? Yeah. You can't do that, can't okay? Do that. For now. And there's value, there's value, there, <laughs> no, there's value in that. But what it can do, and here's my, my, one of the things that, a couple of years ago, a woman came into my office, and I've known her 30 years. She said, hi. And I said, what's the matter? And she started crying. Her life was falling apart. It was too big of a high. And I can imagine that AI could be looking at the last 10 years conversation and say, hey, you know that tone of voice? Think about asking her about anxiety. Ah. So exciting. And you're so right. We have to be in the driver's seat of all of We this. have to be in the driver's seat. Dr. John LaPook, thank you for always being here.